Hey everyone, this is Greg with Science Studio. We have yet again another Intel Skylake build for you, only this time we're upping the ante. If you're interested in spending a bit more than the, I would say, bare minimum for an excellent gaming PC, then look no further. We'll show you here how you can build a gaming PC that can run most titles in 4K Ultra HD for a modest $900. So let's jump right into it. At the core of our build is the Intel i5-6500, a CPU that's a part of the new Skylake lineup. Now right off the bat, I know what you're thinking, well, why not opt for the 6600K if we're going to stick with quad-core CPUs? Well, I came to a crossroad here actually, and honestly either path you choose will leave you with an epic gaming PC. So you can either go with the locked i5-6500 like we've done here, and throw the extra savings into a better GPU or you can opt to settle on a cheaper graphics card for the pricier, unlocked i5-6600K. Keep in mind though that if you decide to purchase the 6600K, you will also need to purchase a custom CPU cooler because Intel doesn't supply you with one. But that makes sense, I mean, most stock coolers don't do the job anyway when it comes to keeping an overclocked CPU cool. So maybe a Corsair or NZXT liquid cooling unit uh, will likely also need to be purchased. Just keep that in mind. Now in our case, because the i5-6500 that we're opting for is not unlocked, its hefty 3.2GHz quad-core architecture will be cooled with the stock Intel fan. No problems there. Following suit with the locked nature of our build is the motherboard, and in this case an LGA 1151 B150 MSI gaming board will do the trick. Since our GPU is locked and immediate upgrades are likely non-existent considering how much we're going to be spending up front, for our CPU, a locked B150 motherboard, which only means that you couldn't overclock the CPU even if you wanted to, would do just fine. The nice black and red curb appeal of the board is also quite pleasing to the eye. So for the RAM, we've chosen the same DDR4 2666MHz Pan RAM 8GB kit that we chose for our $600 build. The memory speed of our RAM, even at this point, will only produce marginal returns in the form of frames per second. We don't recommend paying a premium for super overclocked RAM until you've ventured into i7 territory. The law of diminishing returns just plays too great a role here. We've gone with an Intel 535 series SSD for our boot drive and a Seagate Barracuda 1TB hard disk drive for general storage. The Intel 535 packs quite a punch, boasting 540 megabits per second of sequential reading speeds and 490 megabits per second of writing speeds. If you're still doubtful about the benefits of switching over to an SSD, even at least for the sake of a boot drive, let this graph persuade you otherwise. Compared here are the Photoshop CS6 and Adobe Reader 11 opening times on both a 7200 RPM hard disk drive, which our Barracuda is, and a micro SATA SSD, which our Intel 535 is. Expect your boot and file loading times to be cut in half with this SSD we've chosen. For the graphics card, the Gigabyte GeForce GTX 970 takes our cake, sporting roughly 4GB of VRAM and an overclocked core speed of 1253 MHz, this beast of a card will run most titles in 4K at a modest 30fps. If that won't cut it for you, downgrade to 1080p gaming and enjoy super fluid FPS rates approaching 80 to 100 FPS for most titles. Gigabyte's WinForce edition of this card packs a 3-fan punch as well for optimal cooling and quiet gameplay. You'll also have access to two DVI ports, three display ports, and an added HDMI port. So just let that sink in for a few. Want four monitors displayed all at once? No problem here. So in light of our heavy-duty graphics card, you might be thinking, wow, I'm going to need a sizable power supply to fuel all of these nice parts, right? Well, wrong. Our Intel 6500 has a load wattage rating of 95 watts. Combined with our 970's 310 watt draw under load, our system will likely only require around 500 watts of power at peak demand. Using my simple power supply calculator equation, 500 watts times a safety factor of 1.5 equals 750 watts, which leads us to the power supply. We've chosen an EVGA Supernova 750 watt 80 plus bronze certified power supply. Not only will its bronze rating save you a few bucks every month on your power bill, this version of the PSU sports a semi-modular interface, meaning that you'll only need to hook up extra cables if you need them. NCIX's deal after a $20 mail-in rebate is $64.99, an arguably irrefutable price. 
Now, as we've said before, the case to any build is likely the most objective piece as well. We chose the NZXT Source 210, black in color and sporting a nice window on its side, so that, you know, you can peek at all the goodies. Any case with reasonable airflow should do, as long as it's an ATX mid-tower size or above that supports full ATX motherboards. Don't worry about finding a case with radiator mounting support, as it would be absolutely absurd to liquid cool this log CPU. It just doesn't make sense. So with all the parts now listed, what's our grand total? So not including shipping, of which the case is likely the only culprit should you desire the free shipping option on the other parts listed in this build, the total price for this competitive gaming computer is $912.66. Now, we should note, there aren't too many extra corners you can cut here. Sure, you can opt for a cheaper graphics card, but you'd be doing your quad-core processor an injustice. And much in the same way, settling for an i3 or AMD FX CPU will likely bottleneck your GTX 970. And while you could opt for slightly cheaper RAM, we'll make the case that the extra $10 for faster memory is worth the additional 3-4 FPS in games. So that about wraps things up. Black Friday and Cyber Monday are lurking, and this series of videos is, is meant to inspire you, really, to build your own PC this holiday season. And there's really no better time to purchase the required parts than now. So thanks for sticking around, and stay tuned for our highest budget gaming PC build featuring the Intel Core i7-6700K and a crazy fast GPU. But if you're a bit more budget conscious and concerned about saving money to spend elsewhere, check out our previous budget build for $600, a modest price indeed. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.